since the previous Navi lineup, when they had Zeus before they got Simple in, was such a good team, one of the best of all time, a fantastic team in 2016, making seven finals, winning two titles, admittedly two smaller ones. As this new Navi, which has four of the five same players, wins a title, admittedly a bigger one than the Navi won before, it's too easy, too simple a storyline to just think, oh, they're quite similar as a team, they've just upgraded skill at one position, and now they've won and that player was the MVP. They're actually almost in no way the same Navi, even though they've got four of the five same players. They're so distinctly different in many different areas. So, <clears throat> and not just the fact that Simple's there. So, first and foremost, looking at the ways that this Navi is different from the previous one. First of all, they're winning more CT rounds than they used to win in the previous team. Now, in terms of raw stats, this team's also won quite a lot of terrorist rounds. But the difference is, the old Na'Vi used to rely on the terrorist side so much more. That's why you think of maps like Famous League, Cobblestone, Train. Na'Vi used to be like almost a shoo-in to get near double digits there. And then they used to need it as well against those top teams to get the map win. That's why they could afford to get like five CT rounds on one of those maps. And you knew they could still win the map if they were going to T-side next. In fact, sometimes on Cobblestone, they would pick to start CT as a result. So they kind of had it in, in their mind. Like, how many do we need? Do we need Na'Vi? Do we need 11 rounds on T so they could play accordingly? So this Na'Vi is winning a lot more CT rounds than the old Na'Vi ever did. I mean, at this tournament, they played 104 CT rounds and they won 63 of them. So that's over 60% win rate on CT sides. Now, if you go back and look at the old Na'Vi at kind of their peak, so I'm talking about when the team was very, very good, the in-game leading style of Starks were very good, and Guardian was very good. Two big tournaments where that happened was EPL Season 2 Finals, the one they lost to Fnatic in that five-game series in the final, and then Star Series 14, where they also lost to Fnatic in the final. Now, at those two tournaments, they were at, for EPL Finals, they were at 55% CT round wins, and at Star Series, where arguably they were the best they ever were as a team. They were absolutely phenomenal there, and many thought they were going to win the final, but Fnatic was amazing. They were uh, at only 53% CT side wins. <clears throat> now, it's true in terms of terrorist side, you know, the numbers aren't very much different, actually. Like, there were 50% wins, 50% T side wins, as in on rounds, number of rounds. At this tournament, ESO won New York, they were 47% at EPL 2 on the 48% and they were 51% at Star Series 14. So similar for T rounds, but CT rounds much improved. I mean, <clears throat> we're talking about 5% better than EPL. We're talking about almost, well, over 7% better than Star Series and a difference of 10% between the 50% they win of T rounds at this tournament and 60% at ESL New York on CT side. So they become a CT sided team. Whereas the old Navi was terrorist sided in as much as, yeah, the numbers were less. They won slightly less T rounds than they did CT rounds percentage wise. But that's because the game itself is fairly CT sided. And you think of most of the maps, most of the maps have a CT bias. But Navi specialized on the T maps, train, cobble, they make them into T maps, DOS 2. And they was so phenomenal on T-side that their numbers are almost 50-50 in the old era of Na'Vi, whereas now they're skewed to CT-side. And part of that is the new rejig of how this team works. So <clears throat> I think part of the reason why they're winning more CT rounds, and they're winning T rounds but not in the same fashion, is a function of no Starix as the in-game leader. Starix really now is the coach and gets to have input during before the game and during those timeouts that they take. <clears throat> well, the problem there is Starix is the one who defined their whole style. He was the best of the in-game leaders who were Coaches. He set that system up, that very slow takeover map control, set up Guardian for a shot, then hit the site at the last 20 to 30 seconds, do it in an organized manner. He's the one who set that up. He's the one who integrated Flamey into the system so that then actually Flamey became this very good player. Because the thing is, okay, Zeus had a similar slow style, okay. And he had in general like a similar map control style, but it wasn't as intelligently put in place as much. I mean, Zeus himself was a very weird player. He would sometimes play like half entry type roles at times. So it wasn't as comprehensive a system. He wasn't out of the game watching it. And also, Starix had worked with Flamey. So the key thing is, Starix took like the basics of what was a pretty good system. And I think Zeus was, in, from an in-game leader, actually inside the game, one of the best of all time. But Starix elevated what they did with that. And you saw that the system itself worked so fantastically that, yeah, they were able to get to the MLG Columbus final, even with their superstar player, Guardian, not playing very well, actually having a very poor tournament. It still got them to the final of that tournament and almost won a map against Luminosity. It's also key that when Starix was working with Flamey before he became the in-game leader, when he was the coach, 
He was the guy who integrated Flamey to the lineup initially, and then when he took over as coach, Flamey, it's no coincidence, a couple of months later, became a superstar player himself, one of the best players in the world. And that took some of the pressure off Guardian, who it turned out they needed to do that because he was going to drop off three months later with his wrist injury. So the problem is, without Starix, they're not as intricate now. They're good, but they're winning off their skill. They have the basics down, but they don't have the little calls that you'd have in the middle of the round that Starix could make. They can't make the little nuanced calls to set up map control in the same way they did before. They're very much more relying on basic routine and as a result they're not as godlike on T side and it's mainly strength on CT side because obviously adding simple now they've got a crazy skilled lineup probably the most skilled lineup man for man in all of CSGO right now <coughs> pistol rounds have been incredibly important to this team they're now one of the best pistol round teams out there in 18 pistol rounds at ESO in New York they won 10 of them six of them on CT side so again you see how strong the CT side is for this team <coughs> then you go down the stats in all the maps, there were four of them where they won both pistols. They won all four. They never lost a map. So they get out those early leads. They get all... That's it. They've done it. Because they're not as godlike on T-side. So that's giving them the huge CT halves. That's getting them a little bump up on T-side. On all six maps where they won at least one pistol round, they won the map outright. The three times they lost both pistols, they lost two of those three times. So you can see how key pistols are for this team because it's a play team that's playing off skill and is playing off getting these leads, etc. It's not a team that has the same grit as the old team that could work its way back in and guarantee the T-side. <coughs> They're a team that, because of adding Simplin and his absolutely phenomenal Deagle. I mean, we're talking about one of the best Desert Eagle players of all time. One of the best in the world. I think the only person at the moment who can rival him <coughs> is Nico. Because of adding that in, they've become a lot more dangerous on Ecos and low force buys because now they've got an extra equation there. Whereas in the past, with that amazing style and with Guardian as the primary star, it was actually frustrating how much they would force buy and how much they would go with those Tech Nines and Guardian on a Deagle. Like, they did that too much. Whereas now, they can get away with it more because, first of all, they're not using that overall th tactical style as much anyway. They're not leaning on it. They're not leaning on T-side as much. And now they've got a god like Deagle to go along with some other very skilled players in their team. So they're going to be more dangerous on those Ecos, on those force buys and that's going to be more interesting to see and you saw it in this tournament obviously the, the game against SK <coughs> on Mirage when they're on T-side and Simple got like those four kills with a Deagle on like a ridiculous force buy I mean these sorts of things shouldn't happen normally but can happen now for Na'Vi that wouldn't have before you think before it was envious it was fanatic with the ridiculous force buy teams Crucially, Guardian is not the main star of this team. I mean, Simple was the clear MVP of that tournament, one of the best players in the world right now. Guardian can be a solid second star. Guardian can be an AWPer, but a very good AWPer. So he can play a role, but be one of the best at that role. That's what's going to make them dangerous in terms of the setup, but it's so different from the old team. The old team was all about setting up for Guardian to take those shots and setting him up on his T side and then relying on him on CT side to lock down his spot. Then you got to add in the second best player at this tournament actually was Flamey. Had a pretty solid tournament overall. Obviously had that ham map. I think he was trained against um, Team Liquid. And really got them through the tournament. So at the moment, Guardian doesn't even have to be a top two player necessary in this team. He stepped up in the final. That's true. He was like the old Guardian in the final. But he didn't have to do that for us the tournament. Yet they got to the final and were in position to win anyway. They also don't play around his picks, like I said. As a result, it's no surprise, with Starrix gone and not playing around Guardian's picks, Cobblestone isn't some strength anymore. In fact, now, it's shit. That used to be where Guardian really shined within their system. Now they're Cobblestone, quite poor, in fact, and is a, a major liability for them at the moment. So at the moment, what's interesting is, in the past, 2014 Na'Vi was like the win condition, Guardian must go super ham. 2015 Na'Vi was like, okay, Guardian must go ham, someone else must join him. Maybe occasionally Flamey does. 2016 Na'Vi was like, if Guardian shows up, Flamey's already pretty good and we've got the system, that can get us deep, and if all three happen, we'll win. In this team, the main win condition is going to be two of the three stars must show up. So it must be simple, Flamey, or Guardian. If two of those three show up, they can match any team in the world in terms of star power, and obviously if all three show up, they're going to win, but that's not going to happen that often. They just need two of the three, so in that sense, they've got a very great power lineup here because you don't it's very likely all three are going to show up at the same time very likely at least one is so you're going to be in the game and chances are with players as good as these they're going to have two out of the three quite often so they're going to have the basic win condition against most opponents now edward it must be noted earlier in the year was going super ham for like the first four or five months he's really cooled off he wasn't particularly good here so he's kind of out of sorts he's not the same navi in that sense that's one when they were at their best was when edward is going ham he's the one who helped them get to the final of mlg columbus the first major of the year <coughs> 
Seized was kind of like the, I always called him the insurance policy. Because what happened is if Flamian Guardian was shit in the bed, Seized would come in with all these clutches. He'd drop like 30 kills. He'd play a really all-around game. For like a supportive type play, he was very, very good. Now he's the in-game leader. It seems to have really impacted his individual game. His individual game isn't good. He's not playing that style again. One thing I do like about it, though, is that not only did they not need him, but it's taken the AWP out of his hand. I always hated it when he AWPed. I always thought he was a very average AWPer and used it in scenarios where, considering what a great, well-rounded rifler he was and good clutch round player, I thought it just made him less versatile and less effective overall. So taking the AWP out of his hands, putting it into Guardian and Simples, I prefer that setup myself. But obviously it takes some of the clutch factor out because Seized isn't doing it as much. You gotta add in, so in terms of players, almost everything's different, except that Flamey still has to be the second star, essentially. Now, the map pool has shrunk drastically. Na'Vi used to be the team before S Luminosity became SK and got really super good. Na'Vi had the best map pool in the world. They were absolutely insane. Not least because the maps they were good on, they were insanely good on. I mean, you think before Katowice, they had four maps that they were 60% plus win rate on. Now, from Malmo onwards, they had same four maps they were 60% win rate on. But it, it mixed up a little bit. Like, what happened is, the old Na'Vi, at the beginning of the year, when Guardian was super good, were, like, god like on Dust 2, Cobble, Mirage, and then Train was pretty good, but they had some, some key losses on it, even though they were always close losses. Then, Overpass became godlike from Malmo onwards. They were just never losing that one. They only basically lost it to SK when they were Luminosity in the MLG final, and that was with Guardian being like totally hamstrung. Train became super godlike. That became a map they were picking all the time. They had a massive win streak on that. Cobble remained very good, and they only tended to lose to the other really good Cobble teams. And then Mirage was always solid, but they didn't get to play it as much as they used to pre Kadavice. That was a map that no longer people were willing to play them on, and they themselves weren't really feeling it much. They were going with Overpass picks. They were going with Train picks. So they always had this super strong map pool at all times in now. They always had four maps they could rely on and really be strong on. And obviously, they never Never played cash and then when nuke came into the equation they didn't want to play it they only played it in like e-league type scenarios and in general they were just staying on the top five maps and they were staying away from those two never playing cash anyway <clears throat> now we look at their team now okay here's what remains the same train still a very strong map for them they won all the times they played it at this tournament including twice against vp mirage very strong again for them, actually. They only lost it. I mean, they lost it last tournament at Star Series to Tai Lu. But aside from that, they won against everyone. They won against Team Liquid, who likes Mirage. SK, love Mirage. VP, classic Mirage. So they've got a very strong Mirage and train. Dust 2 was pretty good. Won against Astralis and Team Liquid. Lost both Cobblestones. So we know that's whack. Never played Overpass on LAN. Never played Nuke on LAN. Never played Cash on LAN. We know that out of choice, Cash and Nuke are their bans anyway. So Overpass is a real question mark. Cobblestone's a massive question mark. And the, the other three are the really strong ones. Train, Mirage, Dust 2. So we think about the old Na'Vi. Okay, Na'Vi had actually cooled off Dust 2 like a motherfucker towards the end. They were really good on it early in 2016, but in the end of the Guardian era, that was like a map that was really going out of out of the equation. They'd lost a number of times on it, famously to Cloud9 as well, uh, E-League. And instead, they were in a situation where you know, they weren't playing Mirage as much. Whereas now, Overpass is gone. That's completely out of the map pool. Cobblestone, gone. Two of their top three maps of the last lineup, totally gone. Only train really remains. Mirage has gotten better. Dust two back up there. So very, very different team from any we've ever actually seen for Na'Vi. I mean, this is like... Some of the maps are similar to the beginning of the year, but the style's totally different. And also the strengths are skewed as well. Like, Overpass was never as strong back then. Uh, e even back then. So... Interestingly, bans remain the same. That's the one thing that still remains the same. The mentality for bans is the same. They're always banning those maps. They're never wanting cash. They're never wanting nuke. The picks have tweaked a bit. Like, they still pick train, which used to be, like, the second most picked train and mainly based on opponent in the old Na'Vi. But the old Na'Vi also picked Overpass like a motherfucker. If they ever thought you were weak on Overpass, they went right to Overpass, picked it, and had an amazing win rate on it as a result. This Na'Vi obviously doesn't even play Overpass. This Na'Vi is picking train, and that's basically their pick. We haven't seen many other best of threes from them, but at the moment, train is their go-to map. And the best maps for them are obviously train and Mirage, but they're letting Mirage in general go to the end of pick bans or go to the third map. Now, what's interesting is when you consider all these strengths and the differences in this team, they're going to match up differently against other teams. Like, we think of the old Na'Vi, the key to Na'Vi before is because the map was so deep and the style was so set in place in the system, there wasn't really a bad matchup. Like, they matched up bad against Fnatic, not in any sense on paper, but because Fnatic had this mad psychological edge, had these great winners, so they had a winner's mentality, and had these insane clutch plays. Now, you go and look at all the other teams in that era and actually Na'Vi matched up well against everyone because they had almost the complete package. Now, you go ahead and you look at the teams they're going to match up well against and the teams that they're going to match up 
where it's going to be a more difficult matchup against. And I've kind of picked some out here thinking about who there is out there. So first of all, in terms of teams they're going to match up well against, I think they're going to do very well if they play Cloud9 because they have the same maps in terms of strengths that Cloud9 has. So they've got Mirage, Train, Cobble, Dust2. These are the maps Cloud9 wants to play. So cloud is going to end up playing series, first and third maps, maybe even the second map as well, maybe all three maps, first two definitely, on maps that in theory, the guys from v Navi are going to want. And obviously, Navi has the skill advantage over Cloud9. Then you've got to add in, Cloud9 themselves are banning Nuke, first usually, well, that's ideal. I mean, they've said they don't want to play it. That's ideal for the guys from Navi. They want Nuke as their ban anyway, but they want to ban Cash first. What's the ban map that uh, C9 ban second? Usually Cash. Well, that's already going to be out there from Navi. So the two weak maps for both teams are going to be out, and then you're going to be in a scenario where like, Cloud9 aren't really much of a threat to pick overpass, you'd have to figure. We haven't even seen Navi play, so we can't be sure it's terrible. You just know they haven't played it yet. So C9's going to end up on the same maps, but against a much more skilled team. Then add in, in terms of the AWP matchup, first of all, the guys from Navi can run an insane dual AWP, uh, dual AWP setup because Guardian and Simple. Guardian isn't that sick at the moment. He hasn't got his form back up, but Simple's an amazing AWP. And if those two get going, they'll be the best double AWP setup in the world. Well, the AWP for Cloud9, Skadoodle, is in a bit of a slump right now. He's having some real problems. He's playing like a very basic AWP. So Cloud9 will have a terrible matchup against Navi. I think Dignitas is a team that... Uh, actually, wait a second. That should be in the next section. How have I gotten that there? Let me have a look. Uh, wait a second. I'll put that down here. I don't know why that was in there. Um, let's see. Who else am I picking here? Uh, yeah, so basically, Cloud9 is the team that I'm most interested in. It like it's an obvious pick that they should be better than. Then you've got to look at... I mean, they beat them already, but that's not the reason I'm picking this team. But I think Team Liquid's a pretty solid team to pick because when you go ahead and you say Team Liquid, sure, you're going to say, right, this is a really close series, really great. Obviously, Team Liquid has the, the edge on Cobblestone. I agree in that sense. The problem is Team Liquid, even in that match, only got to three maps thanks to this mad overperformance from Elyse. And Elyse in general at this tournament was better than we've ever seen him before and was the best player to play for NA or a Team Liquid player in like a year except for simple, basically, at the majors. So I think Team Liquid's an obvious one that they're going to match up well against. I mean, obviously, all the lower teams are going to match up against. But here's what's interesting. Because they don't have the super sick map pool and they don't have the super sick structure, I actually think there's a number of teams that they're going to have some issues with. So actually, Dignitas is going to be one of them, but I'll put that further down. I don't know why I put that in the top section. So I've got a whole bunch of teams, and they're going to be interesting for you, that I think actually can cause Na'Vi some problems or will match up well against them. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with... Obviously, the two teams that you'd expect me to say. The two best teams in the world, right? We're going to start out with Virtus Pro and SK. So Virtus Pro can match up well against Na'Vi because they have a map pool as well that goes towards Na'Vi. I mean, Virtus Pro, if they get back into it, can also play stuff like Overpass and start to really go into the weaknesses of the guys from Na'Vi. In general, Virtus Pro themselves, okay, they're going to ban Dust 2. Yeah, that's traditional. But Na'Vi's going to probably, if two ban, two rotations of ban come in, take out a cash that VP don't really want anyway. VP actually obviously picked Nuke against SK, so they showed they can play Nuke. If they pick Nuke against Na'Vi, that will be pretty interesting because we know Na'Vi doesn't want to play that. And in theory, VP could do a first pick there. And if they turn out to be good on Nuke, which admittedly they've only really done one really good one on it, then that would be a very sexy aspect to it. But otherwise, traditionally, yeah, they're going to end up playing stuff like Train and Mirage, almost certainly in the series, right? Well, we know VP is really good on both these maps and that they can go head-to-head -head with the Na'Vi guys. Add in, Vutspro have the grit. So if Na'Vi doesn't get front-running, and if Na'Vi gets behind, or Na'Vi puts VP behind, VP can win from all these scenarios. Can Na'Vi? Can Na'Vi come back from 10 rounds back? Can Na'Vi be leading, but then start having the lead eroded and still hold on? Now, sure, we saw them do it in one tournament, but these are big question marks. We know what Virtus Pro are. They're a very known quantity. Then add in, VP are good on both sides of the game, so it's never over with Virtus Pro, and they're going to be scrappy in that sense. Plus, Na'Vi look like good front runners in rounds with all the firepower, but the guys from VP, we know players like Snacks, Neo have great clutch potential. So I think VP's a team, as with almost all teams, VP match up against very, most teams very, very well for these reasons. I think VP's going to match up against them very well. I think SK definitely going to match up with them because first of all, I still think SK is the best team. So SK has the map pool as well. They actually have the deepest map pool in the entire world right now. The only map they're really not playing is Cash. I mean, in theory, they can play Nuke as well, even though you saw them get wrecked against... Uh, 
the VP. Because, I mean, let's be real. Cold Zero wasn't Cold Zero this tournament. Cold Zero turns up for real. I don't think FNX is having a 7 for 21 type performance again. SK can go every map down. And Na'Vi's no threat to pick Nuke. So Nuke's out of there anyway. So I think the guys from SK are a real threat. Should probably be favoured every time they play against Na'Vi. Then you've got to add in Star Power. Absolutely, SK can go head to head with them with Star Power. You've got your flamey, simple Guardian trio. Cool, we've got... Cold Zera, Fallen, Fur. That's fucking fire right there. Though, and now, in terms of raw skill, if they're at their peak, I'd edge it to the Na'Vi side. But the difference is, it's usually fairly consistent what you're going to get out of the stars from SK. So I think in terms of star power, SK can match up. Overall team strength, SK is a better team right now. And the overall team works together in their system better. And they have a system. Na'Vi haven't shown us that they have a system in the same way that they used to. So the system can win out when the players from SK aren't playing super well. Whereas Na'Vi need those stars to play really well. Then add in SK is good on both sides. SK has the best stopper. Sure, Simple might one day be the best stopper. Right now, Fallen is the best stopper. In terms of double op setup. So let's say they go double op setup versus each other. I think at the moment, with Guardian off form a little bit, I'd actually favour the SK double up setup. Not least because of how they use it within their system. And how Fallen still managed to make the AWP work when he's not hitting crazy normal AWP shots. So I think SK is the, are one of the teams that not only match up well, but actually have an advantage over the Na'Vi guys. Now in terms of G2, I think this will be a very interesting matchup. In terms of, if G2 hit that peak. Now man to man, day to day, sure, Na'Vi probably should be able to beat a team like G2. But if G2 hit come with that explosive form, both teams are explosive. G2 come with that explosive T-side. Let's consider Cash is an amazing map for them. That's a map that they can go right ahead. Okay, Navi's going to ban it. Fair enough. Navi ends out the Cash. Okay, well, now these guys can go ahead and they can pick Overpass, right? We know that's a pocket pick for the guys here. We haven't seen Navi play it yet. I think that's interesting in itself. Star Power. Okay, they don't have the man for man star power Navi does. They're not as skilled overall. But their two stars, Scream and Shocks, when they're on, can absolutely go with any of the two stars from Navi who might be going. So I think G2's more of an outsider. G2 have to be really on form to beat Navi in like a best of three. But I think G2 can pose some problems in that particular sense. And obviously, Dust 2's going to be in the mix by banning out Cash. So we know G2 are amazing on Dust 2. And Navi's good, but they haven't looked as sick as G2 do at their prime on Dust 2. Forget just ESL1 New York. So there's one team right there. Dignitas, as I kind of alluded to before. The key to Dignitas and why this can be a great series when they match up is Dignitas is one of the only teams in the world who play every single map on LAN. And that's key. Now, add into that so they can go anywhere in the map pool against these guys from Na'Vi and look for their weaknesses and they can ban strengths. Also, Dignitas, really good nuke team. We know that. So as a result, they can pick nuke when Na'Vi bans cash first. That means there's one map right there that they can scare Na'Vi with. Then add in, okay, Na'Vi's not good on cobblestone, right? We saw they had issues there, but they're going to leave it in because they're banning cash, right? Well, we know Dignitas, good on cobble. At times, very good. They have a solid Dust 2. Dust 2 is very likely to be played in that series. Dignitas has tactics, which again, a system can overcome just individual strengths and overcome lack of individual performance on yourselves. And also add in that Trainer Mirage are potential bans that the guys from Dignitas can do to get two of the best maps from Na'Vi out of there. So they can get to Na'Vi bad max, they can kick out Na'Vi's best maps, and they can play on the middle maps for Na'Vi, and they have a system and tactics. So I think, sure, in terms of raw firepower, I'm going to edge Na'Vi on that one by a decent margin, because they don't have like the one superstar at the moment on Dignitas. But they have pretty decent skill on Dignitas. And then you add in that they've also got this system and the, and the interesting map pool. Not a super sick deep map pool where they're amazing on every map, but they're good enough across the spread and they can go different directions that I think as a result, adding in the nuke, which is going to be a key factor when they play, that they can be a really interesting match. Like I, th I think that's the really sexy one. You can pick VP and SK. Obviously, they should be able to match up well just because of what they are as teams. But watch out if Dignitas plays Na'Vi in a best of three because that will be fun. There's a lot can happen there. I'm actually going to add in another Danish team. It's not Astralis. It's Heroic. Because here's the thing. The key that Heroic has is they have the classic upset factor, where what they have is the opposite map pool to Na'Vi. So these guys will pick Cobblestone. They'll pick Overpass. They can play Nuke. These are the maps that the guys from Na'Vi don't really want to play, can't play, and Cash isn't even in there. The guys from Heroic don't have to play Cash. So Na'Vi takes out Cash, and the three maps that Heroic can pick and play and have a good chance against Na'Vi on are all available from the pick, and they can just pick the one that they feel like they have the best chance on. Then add in that actually, okay, they're not good on Trainer Mirage, but they're average on Trainer Mirage. So those are the maps that likely Na'Vi's going to pick. So on Na'Vi's pick, they're at least going to have an okay chance. They're not going to be favoured by any stretch of the imagination, but they're going to have a good chance on their map, okay favoured here, and then who knows what the third is, probably an okay one again, if not a decent one. 
one because they've got so many in their pool. So I think actually Heroic, in terms of team, it isn't close to Na'Vi. But in terms of matchup, that's a good matchup actually for the Heroic guys. Good in the sense that they can play it, by the way. Not good as in they're going to win it. <laughs> Obviously, Na'Vi still has a massive firepower advantage on that team especially. Especially star power. Now, the last one I'm going to put in here is actually Envious. So classically, what's funny about this is the idea that Envious will pose Na and Na'Vi problems. That's what shows you how different this team is. Because remember, the old Na Envious famously used to be better than Na'Vi, but used to always lose to Na'Vi because Na'Vi had the crazy matchup advantage against them when they would play DOS 2 and Cobble and these sorts of maps that Na'Vi would love to play and would get the 2-0 against them. So I think right now, Envious actually has an interesting matchup against Na'Vi because first of all, Envious are Cash and Cobble specialists. So Na'Vi takes out Cash. Okay, now they can go straight to Cobble. And at the moment, Na'Vi's Cobble is fucking whack. So Envy, with their great Seaside, they'd be really favoured to win Cobble there. I'd pick them to win Cobble against Na'Vi. Dust2 has gotten back up in there for the map pool of the guys from Envy. So I think they can play it, certainly, against Na'Vi. We'll see how, who's better on it. I mean, both haven't played a whole lot recently. Na'Vi, Envy is actually amazingly have begun to play Nuke. They played it against Epsilon and won. I think the Epsilon's not a sick team, but they told me they've been playing it a bunch. And obviously, when Na'Vi takes out Cash, if you can play Nuke, sometimes you're going to want to try and pick that and try and see what happens. Also, in terms of firepower, especially now that Devil's gone, I think in terms of firepower, they certainly have players. Admittedly, we're going with name value a bit, MBK, happy, I haven't been super sick recently. But in terms of raw firepower, there can be games where an Envious could certainly match up and contain the Na'Vi guys in terms of pure firepower. Then you've got to add in Strong Opera on the guys from Na'Vi. Kenny S is really back in form. That'll be interesting going head-to-head -head with Simple. Very different style of Opera. Guardian is a classic matchup for Kenny S there, and Guardian's not in form at the moment. I think the Open kind of neutralizes itself against Envious. And finally, if you're the guys from Na'Vi and you want to win a lot of CT rounds, that's where you want to do a lot of work. Well, Apex, when he has those ham series and he's entering, he can really do a lot to damage your CT side and force you to have to win T rounds, which has been one of the bigger problems for Na'Vi overall. Now, they're still very good at it, but they're not the old Na'Vi in that sense, and they don't have the system to ensure they can win them. So you can see there, there's a couple of teams I think they're obvious favorite over. The rest of them, there's a pretty widespread of teams there who can match up well, who can, who can be favored against them, and who have different areas they can go to against Na'Vi. So even though Na'Vi's just won this big tournament, yes, all New York. First big 250k plus tournament that they've won. Okay, great, awesome. We can't wait to see them. They look in terms of skill and, and strengths like they can be amazing. Pissed around, simple, flamey, guardian setup. This is all great stuff. The big issue is that compared to the old Na'Vi, they have some key weaknesses or question marks at the moment that I think are going to make them less consistent and less able to just win each tournament unless people like Simple really do just god mode carry every single one.